Good day. Welcome back to TuitionTuit.com. You are now with Liz Sundram. And currently, we are in a series of video to explain about Chapter 11, Immunity of Form 4 Biology Syllabus. And the good news is, we are at the last video. We are done with all the explanation of immune system. First line of defense, second line of defense, third line of defense, which is uh, immune response. Everything already explained. Sometimes, sometimes maybe the immune system does not function properly or maybe the cells that are involved in the immune response the cells that are involved in body defense system might be killed or affected by certain other pathogen maybe like a virus so the last explanation that we have in this chapter is what are the diseases that occurs if the body defense system is not functioning properly and in our syllabus there is only one disease we need to explain and it's quite a famous disease the name of the disease is AIDS so we have a cute compact explanation basically AIDS has been in the syllabus for quite a long time it's in the syllabus I think for the last 20 years but in terms of exam question there is not much exam question when it related to AIDS I remember I think only one uh, essay question even that it was like three marks four marks question so it is in the syllabus but normally it is rarely comes up now why is it like that now when we talk about AIDS you know whenever we mention the word AIDS automatically we have this prejudice when we think of AIDS we automatically think of sexual intercourse or sexual activities even though there are many different ways how someone can be infected by the virus we normally relate or associate AIDS with sex or sexual activities or sexual intercourse when someone have AIDS now our mind automatically goes you know he did something wrong uh, during the sexual intercourse that's what our mind automatically does even though there are many different ways how someone can become infected another prejudice that we have is we normally relate, this is a prejudice, we normally relate sexual activities with certain group of people. We always have this idea that Asians are very conservative. We don't really uh, openly talk about sexual activities. That, what I mean by that is, let's say you have some doubt related to you know, some, some question related to sexual organs or maybe sexual activity. Asians, do we dare to go and ask that information from our parents? I remember one incident last time I asked something from my parent and I got scolding. I didn't get answer. I got scolding. But that's how, you know, Asian parents work in the sense we don't openly talk about this kind of these matters, sexual activity or sexual intercourse or uh, sexual organs. We don't openly talk about. So we call ourselves conservative. But at the same time, based on the movies that we see, we have this general idea that like Americans, Europeans, they are more open about it. That means if the children have any question related to you know, sexual organs or sexual activity, they can openly talk with the parents. That's the impression I have. It might be prejudice also. So the general rule that we have is Asians are conservative, whereas European Americans are uh, open-minded they can openly talk about it and they the way they approach sexual activities is a bit different so we already have the first prejudice which is AIDS is sex and we also relate these sexual activities to a few group of people like Americans and Europeans for a very long time in my physical class I always mentioned American and Europeans and this one group of boys they were not happy so you must add another group inside so when I asked them what group you must add in, they also suggested add in Japan also inside. Not sure why they suggested that. But anyway, Americans, Japan, Europeans. We have this prejudice. They do more sexual activities. They approach it differently compared to we conservative Asians. Now one plus one is two. That's a general rule. So AIDS means sex. That's a prejudice. Sex means American, Japan, and Europe. Sexual activity means American, Japan, and Japanese people, and European people. So we make a conclusion that because these are the people that we think are doing more sexual activity, so these are the people that should have more AIDS patient. AIDS means sexual activities. Sexual activity means European, American, Japanese people. So they should have more AIDS. We Asians should have less AIDS patients. Let's see whether the facts, the scientific facts, 
the statistic prove what we are thinking that there is less AIDS patients in Asia. There are more AIDS patients in America, Japan and Europe. Now let's see what happened. Now this is the chart that shows us the number of AIDS patients. The darker the color, the more the number of AIDS patients. Now if you see the countries that we relate to sexual activities earlier, which is America, Europe, and also Japan are some of the countries where we have the least number of AIDS patients. Comparatively with other countries, there are less AIDS patients in Europe, in Japan, in America, in Australia also. And the countries that we relate to conservative, Asians for example, Asia and Africa is where we have high number of AIDS patients. In, in Malaysia, not that bad. Like actually, if you look at Malaysia, the, the color is still light. But generally for Asia and also Russia, the number of AIDS patients is higher compared to America, Europe and Japan. Now we had a prejudice earlier. AIDS means sexual activity. Sexual activity means AIDS. But what the statistic shows is Asians and Africans who we generally relate to more conservative have more people with AIDS compared to the other countries. Why is it like this? The one answer is education awareness. People in America, people in Europe, people in Japan, they know what is AIDS. They know how someone can become infected. So because they know how they can become infected, they know how to protect themselves. People in Africa, general, general people in Africa, even South America and Asia, less educated general statement so there are more people who are uneducated meaning they don't know AIDS disease exists they don't know how someone can become infected because they don't know how they can become infected they don't protect themselves end up the rate of transmission people getting infected by HIV is high so it's all about awareness now, Malaysian government realized this long time ago. So that is why almost like 20 years ago, when they changed the syllabus, they add in AIDS explanation, HIV, uh, generally AIDS and HIV explanation. So my opinion is, is more like creating awareness because you come under the high risk group. Teenagers and adults are the high risk group. Most of the infection occurs during this age. If you know what the disease is, if you know how someone can become infected, you know how to protect yourself. So that when we do a survey like this in 10 years or 20 years time, we can make sure you are not part of the statistic. That means you don't become infected with HIV. So this AIDS explanation, as for me, is more like creating awareness about the disease so that you know how to protect yourself. So. They add it into the syllabus so that every student knows what is this disease, how to protect yourself. So as I mentioned, it's in the syllabus for a very long time. Only once it came out as an essay question worth around four marks. It's in the syllabus, meaning if they want, they can ask. But so far they have enough. You know, but the thing is, most of the explanation of AIDS is like a common sense. Most probably you already know. Maybe I'm just going to add in some one or two extra information. But generally, Malaysians are aware of the disease. You know more or less how someone can become infected. So let's go into the explanation. We are learning about AIDS. We are learning about HIV so that we don't become part of the statistic. Yes, it could be an exam question, but it's more towards awareness. Knowing the disease so that you can protect yourself. Some general information that you need to know. AIDS is short form for the full name of the disease, which is acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. The word acquired here means the word acquired means at birth they don't have this disease. They acquire the disease during their lifetime because uh, this disease, what it's going to do is it's going to make the immune system weak. System pertahanan badan menjadi lemah. Body defense system become weak because of this disease. 
So, but there are also people at birth itself already have some problem with the immune system. Masa lahir, sudah ada masalah sistem pertahanan badan. So, to to differentiate that, people who already have problem at birth or people who had normal immune system, during the lifetime, they become infected by this virus, human immunodeficiency virus. Short form is HIV. It looks almost like the COVID-19 virus, almost the same. That's also virus, this also virus. Acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. Acquired because they get the infection during their lifetime. At birth, they had normal immune system. Immunodeficiency means immune system is weak. Now, why the immune system become weak? We need to explain what HIV does inside our body. So, one of the first things we need to explain, how does the HIV enter into the body? Meaning, methods of transmission. Some of the general information that you need to know. The first and the most famous method, famous means most of the people, when you ask, do you know about AIDS? This is what normally comes to their mind. Sexual intercourse, unprotected sexual intercourse. The male produces semen. The female produces vaginal fluid. So it depends. If the male is already infected, the semen will have HIV. If the female already infected, vaginal fluid will have HIV. If they are having unprotected sexual intercourse, the other person can become infected. Now, what's the meaning of unprotected? So, to protect yourself from infection, in case, you know, the partner, the status of uh, AIDS is not known. Before having sexual intercourse, you're not sure whether the partner is free or not free of HIV. Best thing is, you're better safe than sorry. But in case, you know, need to do the sexual intercourse, you're not sure. So, you need to protect yourself. As for the guys, the protection that you're supposed to use is male condom so this male condom will be used to cover the penis to cover the erect penis the idea is later the semen will be released the semen will be trapped inside the male condom it doesn't enter into the female so by wearing or by covering the erect penis with male condom it ensures the semen does not enter into the vagina the semen will be trapped inside the male condom. Now, I'm using the word male condom because there is also one more called as female condom. Female condom means this is used by the female during sexual intercourse. This will be inserted into vagina. I assume you have learned all of this in form 1, if I'm not mistaken. This, all of this explanation, how to prevent pregnancy, used to be in the form 5 syllabus. Now, they bring it to Form 1 syllabus, if I'm not mistaken. But anyway, take this as general knowledge. The guy can use male condom. The female can use female condom. But normally, uh, female condom is a bit troublesome to use. So, most of the time, the male condom should be sufficient. And we just have to make sure it doesn't tear. You know, karena sangat mungkin boleh koyak lah. But uh, that rarely happens. So, most of the time, it's enough to prevent the semen from entering into the vagina, it can prevent the transmission of the virus from one person into another person. So this is one of the method how the virus is transmitted from one person into another, from an infected person to another person. The second method is, this one all no, not that famous, but this is also methods how someone can become infected. So the second one is, when we do blood donation, I've, I've already explained blood donation in chapter 10 previously. So when we do blood donation, I've mentioned to you, I showed you the video where as soon as we uh, the blood starts to flow out, the nurse will collect like four or five test tubes of blood. That blood will be sent for screening, sent to lab for screening, meaning the lab will do some tests to find out whether the blood have or don't have HIV. If the blood have HIV, you can transfer it into another person. 
So before we can transfer the blood into another person, we have to make sure the blood doesn't have any of the pathogen that can cause disease. One of them is HIV. So by right, this one rarely happens by right. Before the blood is transferred to another person, we make sure the blood is clean from the pathogen. But sometimes mistakes might happen. Like for example, this one. Uh, this boy was in, I think, Sagamat, Doho, a government hospital. And they gave him a blood transfusion. Happens to be the blood that they transfer had HIV. Now that boy, young boy, is HIV positive. Now that boy have AIDS. And the mistake was the government uh, hospital's mistake. Some cases were going on, but I'm just showing you it does happen. Now this was like maybe 10, 15 years ago. But it still happened on and off. Even though we take all the precautions, sometimes mistakes do happen. So this was during former Prime Minister, uh, Dr. Sri Najib. You can see the one Malaysia symbol here. Lah, those days. So, you know, this uh, government officer is hugging the boy and then giving him, you know, support or something. But the thing is, the boy's future is gone. In the sense, he has AIDS. He can't live like a normal person anymore. Because of the mistake, of the staff at the government hospital so this is one the next one the next method how someone can become infected <laughs> see this, this baby is crying maybe the baby already infected by hiv so the hiv also can be transferred from mother into the baby or into the fetus during pregnancy hiv can pass through from mother's blood into fetus blood through placenta hiv is small it can pass through placenta. After delivery, the HIV also can pass through mother's milk into the, we already learned mother's milk, the function of mother's milk in chapter, in the same chapter uh, before this. Natural passive immunity. You should remember the name of mother's blood. We use the word uh, colostrum. So in case the mother is HIV positive, then the, the mother's milk might have HIV. It might cause infection. So this is because, take note, mother's milk is body fluid. Vaginal fluid, semen, blood, all of this comes under body fluid, including saliva. Sometimes even saliva also can cause infection. So at the moment, this is from mother into baby, mother into fetus also can happen. So... The number one, sexual intercourse, unprotected sexual intercourse. Number two is blood and unscreened blood transfusion. Number three is from mother to baby or mother to fetus. Number four is by using syringe. Nowadays, there is a trend. Everyone you see will have tattoo. If you don't have a tattoo, you are like, you are, you know, you are outdated. You are not cool. Sometimes, you know, the impression that we have. Everyone you see have tattoo. They, they have some kind of, uh, you know, some kind of feeling like they have tattoo means they are, you know, they are cool or something like that. But anyway, it's your body. You can do whatever you want. But make sure in case someone is getting a tattoo because we have to inject the ink into the skin, you have to use needle. So we have to make sure the needle is sterile. Make sure, you know, in case if you decide to have a tattoo, your personal choice, but make sure you choose, uh, you know, a certified tattoo artist before you go and do it. We don't want to end up with problem like, because there might be some blood stain in the needle. And if that blood stain enters into another person's body, they might become infected. So the fourth method, how someone can become infected through sharing of syringe or injection needle. Uh, it's quite common among drug addicts. Many drugs that are abused, they are injected into the body. And normally these drug addicts, they don't have money to buy new syringe. And if they want to buy also, where to buy? You go and ask pharmacy, most probably they don't sell. Because they know you're a drug addict. So they tend to reuse the syringe and they share the syringe. If one of the drug addicts is HIV positive, if he use the syringe, there might be some blood stain. If another person use, that person might become infected. In Malaysia, if I'm not mistaken, spread of HIV AIDS among drug addicts is quite high. One of the major concerns. So from that, once a person becomes infected, what happens? For the first eight years or so, 
HIV is already inside the body. That person is known as HIV carrier. He's already infected. But for the next seven, eight years, that person will not have any symptom. Just like you, just like me, healthy person, but inside the body have HIV. And that is a very dangerous time because unknowingly that person might transfer the HIV to another person because he doesn't know he has HIV because no symptom. So if that person have unprotected sexual intercourse with another person, that person might become infected. And this person didn't know he is infected. So that is why one of the ways to reduce HIV transmission is there is something called a screening. Those days, if I tell screening, a bit hard for the student to understand. Nowadays, after the pandemic, screening means you test because someone infected by COVID-19, for the first week, that person will be normal. Then only the fever will come. First few days, normal. So you won't even know that person already infected. Same thing here. So how to know if that person is in a high risk group? High risk group means Maybe that person is involved, you know, taking drugs, using syringe. Maybe that person is involved in prostitution. High risk group. Chances of them becoming infected is high. So regular blood tests, we call that screening to check whether that person is infected or not infected. So that's one way to reduce the chance because that person already infected doesn't know and he might spread it to another person also. So after Infection, 7-8 years, generally 7-8 years, no symptom. After that, after that only the symptoms start to appear. The body mass will start to decrease. The white blood cells, mainly the lymphocytes will be killed by HIV. When the lymphocytes are killed by HIV, the immune system become weak. So HIV kills the lymphocyte immune system become weak when the immune system become weak that AIDS patient can be easily infected by other diseases the most common one they get is tuberculosis which you also learn in this chapter they easily become infected by TB tuberculosis bacteria or they might get pneumonia lung infection or because the skin is exposed to the environment, they easily get skin infection. All of these diseases in general, like the skin infection, normal people who have normal immune system, they can kill the pathogen because the immune system is strong. People with AIDS, immune system is weak. Even a simple pathogen also for them hard to kill. Lymphocytes are already the number of lymphocytes is already low. HIV kills the lymphocyte. So one of the uh, common diseases related to AIDS is what you see here. This is a skin infection. There is a name for it, Kaposi sarcoma. Not mentioned in the textbook, if I'm not mistaken. It's a uh, one of, that means if you know, if you want to identify an AIDS patient, if you want to identify an AIDS patient, this is one of the easiest way to identify. The skin will have lesions. We call all of these lesions. L-E-S-I-O-N-S. -E so this disease, normal people like you and me cannot get because the pathogen is easy to kill. Our body defense system can kill the pathogen. But for people with AIDS, a simple pathogen also they cannot kill. This one, the skin infection becomes something like cancer. We call it Kaposi sarcoma. We call this lesions on the skin. But that is extra information for you. All that you need to know for your syllabus. Immune system is weakened because lymphocytes die. Easily become infected by other disease. End of the day, they are going to die because of other disease. Maybe this person becomes infected by tuberculosis. So because of tuberculosis, that person is going to die. Because hard to fight back. Immune system is weak. But this disease was actually discovered in 1980s. 1980, the scientists who identified the HIV got Nobel Prize also. If you count, it's already 40 years. From 1980 until now, it's already 40, 43 years. We don't have any cure. 
we only have treatment. But the treatment compared to last time has become much better. People with AIDS can live long now, those days. Once they, the symptoms appear within one year, two years, they die, those days. Now they can live long because we have uh, effective medicine for treatment. Cure don't have. So there is a saying, prevention is better than cure. In AIDS explanation, there is no cure. So the only option you have is prevention. Earlier we mentioned how someone can become infected. So we make sure we avoid all of that activities. We can prevent ourselves from becoming infected. As I mentioned, this whole AIDS explanation is information about AIDS so that you don't become infected. You know how to protect yourself. Awareness about the disease. So how to protect? Number one, education. That's what we are doing now. AIDS is in the syllabus to create awareness. Can come out as exam question, but most of the time it's there for you to know what is the disease so that you can avoid become infected. Education is number one. Number two, protection during sexual intercourse, male use, male condom, so that the semen doesn't enter into vagina. Number three, counseling for AIDS patient. The moment someone is diagnosed as AIDS patient, their life immediately changed. People are going to look at that person differently. There is this uh, stigma. There's this stigma. I mean, people with AIDS, there is like some sign here, danger. So don't go near. I mean, we know, you know, when we, we sit with the AIDS patient, we talk with the AIDS patient, we hug the AIDS patient, you are not going to become infected because infection can only happen through body fluid. The stigma will be there. The, the moment someone is diagnosed as an AIDS patient, immediately the world changes. People are going to look at this person differently. This person needs counseling so that they don't take any unwanted action. Because there are cases where when the person is diagnosed with AIDS, HIV positive, that person feel the world has uh, you know, cheated on him, him or her. So sometimes they take revenge. They go around purposely spreading the HIV to other people. Many cases, you can check in internet. Many people where people knew they are HIV positive, they purposely go and have sexual intercourse with some other people so that they become infected. When we ask them, I'm taking revenge. The world was cruel on me, so I, I pay back to the world. Something like that. To make sure this kind of justification, this kind of actions are not done, Counseling for AIDS patient. Like remember I told you, uh, if you donate blood, they will take the blood sample and check for HIV. So if let's say they found out it's HIV positive, they will call back. The hospital will call back because all your details will be there. They will call back. They'll ask you to come to a hospital and they'll give you the information you are HIV positive. Most probably you didn't know you are HIV positive and they'll give you counseling. What's going to happen after this? Where you can get help? What are the medications? What are the costs? They give you all the information. They have a support system to support the AIDS patient. Counseling for AIDS patient is important. And the last one I have in here is screening to detect carriers. As I mentioned, up to eight years, no symptom, but HIV positive. During that time, that person may accidentally transfer the virus to another person. So doing a blood test to find out whether there is HIV or no HIV is uh, recommended. There are some countries where we need to, before you can get married, you need to go and do a blood test. You must get the result. Uh, you are not HIV positive. Only then you can get married to protect the, you know, either side to protect the husband, to protect the wife. If you have a certificate, I'm HIV free, only then you can get married. Some countries do that. That's the extreme they can go. But these are some of the ways we can prevent a spread of HIV and AIDS. So that's basically it. That's all we need to know. So I'll finish the explanation with this uh, nice poster here. Spread the word, not the virus, stop AIDS. Spread the word, not the virus, stop it. That means basically, 
spread the information what is hiv let, let people know what is hiv what is aids so that they know how to protect themselves now there is a fine print at the bottom here and i took this poster because i like the wording that is at the bottom now i'll zoom into that so what the wording says is it is bad enough that people are dying of aids but no one should die of ignorance no one should get hiv infection because they didn't know such a disease exists that is why awareness education awareness is important thanks to malaysian government actively they have added information about aids into the syllabus even science students also learn this that means all the secondary students learn about aids so that you are aware of the disease you know how to protect yourself and that is the last explanation for chapter 11 immune system or immunity interesting chapter if you ask me one of the most interesting chapter in the form 4 syllabus is this chapter chapter 11 and they are quite famous for exam whether they come out for the exam or not the information that you learn in this chapter can be used in your daily life how does your body protect your body from pathogen from disease is what you learn in this chapter the next chapter chapter 12 is coordination another interesting chapter so i'll see you in the next chapter thanks for coming